3D scanners are surprisingly awesome. You can supposedly take anything in the real world and get a 3D model into your 3D modeling program. You don't have to make it from scratch, no guessing with a tape measure, nothing. Just exact dimensions into the program. This is especially true of like complex organic shapes, the kind of thing that you couldn't just like use a tape measure and sculpt it accurately without years of like 3D sculpting practice. Even then, like exact dimensions, I bet they're not right. But I have made like perfectly sealed 3D printed masks. I made a perfectly shaped dress form for my wife and soon a custom 3D printed car body for like a Power Wheels toy. All thanks to these things, they are awesome. But 3D scanners are not all created equal. That's by design, it kind of makes like picking one kind of a challenge. And I'm not talking like commercial units that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm talking these home workshop kind of ones that are under a grand, well under a grand. Let me explain. Take a look at a mirror. If you are a standard human with a standard issue unaugmented face, you probably have two eyes a few inches apart, right? Those eyes see two slightly different images. And your brain, the big nerd inside your skull, uses those differences in the images to calculate kind of how far something away from you is, what kind of three-dimensional shape it's got. Uh, if you close one eye, you can kind of still see, you know, what's closer or farther away. But with both eyes, you're, you're better off, I don't know, playing shuffleboard, for example. Good old depth perception, it helps. Now there's different kinds of 3D scanning out there. Some of them shoot lasers, some use infrared. Uh, some just flood things with light so that different cameras can get a better view of it. But these two here have multiple cameras, two cameras, and they're kind of a distance apart for the same reason your head has two eyes in it. Now sure, the quality of the cameras and the software that interprets the images, that matters. But there's another consideration. How far apart do you put those cameras? The last time I did a 3D scanner video about this one, a very helpful viewer posted a long comment talking about 3D scanners. I'm gonna try to summarize a little bit of what he said. If I get it wrong and you're watching, post again. Basically, the closer those two cameras are to each other in the scanner, the closer they can be to the object, the closer they have to be to the object, the smaller thing they can see, the narrower the field of view, and the better detail they can resolve. Likewise, you move the cameras further apart, it can see bigger things farther away, but you lose some surface detail. I have two scanners here. They're built a little bit differently, and I wanna put them to the test. They also use different software, but it's basically the same. It takes a scan of things to get a point cloud, and then it uses some software to make that point cloud into a 3D mesh. It's very simple, they're easy to use, and they'll give you like an STL or an OBJ file, or they give you multiple formats. One of them will work with whatever 3D modeling program you're using. I use Blender, they all work on that. One of these scanners you've seen before. This is a Creality CR Scan Ferret. I use this to, to scan the image of my head and it works great for that. You know, it does the face, super easy. Hair is a bit iffy, especially if it's black hair. Since these use cameras and black, the color black absorbs light, it can be a little iffy, but it does your face perfectly well. It can also do an entire body. I scanned my wife's body completely and then printed her out a dress form. It fits perfectly. I did this because she has scoliosis, so her body's not like totally symmetrical. So you can imagine how tough it is to make clothes that actually fit her. Not anymore. I even scanned a whole Power Wheels Mustang after taking a bunch of bits off. I was able to take that, put it in Blender, and then take another 3D model of a car, stretch it to kind of fit, and uh, you're gonna see the results of that probably in like a month or two. But it captured like the shape of everything, location of the seat, the steering wheel, even like screw, screw points and like bumper mounting locations and it's gonna be very helpful. This scan that whole car in one shot. It's great for bigger stuff. Creality themselves say 150 millimeter and bigger. I've also seen reviews of people taking these and scanning like whole fenders on cars. I guarantee it would work great for that. It even gets some of the details like when I shaved my beard to get a beardless scan of my face and I cut myself and that scab from the cut showed up in the scan. It's pretty good. The other scanner I have here is the 3D Maker Pro Seal. It's a very new scanner and they say it's perfect for scanning smaller things. How small? Well, they say 10 millimeters up to 300 millimeters. That big. I'm American, metric is confusing. So I've gathered a collection of small junk here and we're gonna scan it with both and see what happens. I'm also not using ideal conditions here. This is a garage, this is not a studio. I don't have perfect lighting. I'm not using that 3D scanner spray that people recommend. I'm not even gonna clean this stuff off. I'm just gonna try it. I also have this turntable here. I got this specifically from 3D Maker Pro, but you can get a similar thing from Creality and it probably works the same. This seal scanner was sent to me by 3D Maker Pro. And I think it might be like a pre-release version. So if you get one and it differs, that's probably why. Anyways, we're gonna start with this. The biggest thing I got, this wooden poseable dude that I've jammed into an eraser because my kids lost the actual stand for it. Whatever, it's fine. This is still lower than like the Creality minimum 150 millimeter limit, 
We're gonna try it anyway, because I do what I want. Despite being small, the ferret still gets a recognizable model out of it. It can scan the whole thing at once, it looks kind of tiny in the screen, and it looks like this little guy uh, got leprosy, but you can still see the facets on the face, and you would definitely be able to get dimensions of the arms and other pieces off of the model. It shouldn't be a problem. Now how about the seal? Well, this model's a bit tall, so I put it on the turntable, and moving around, I actually had to pan the thing up and down, because it could only get like waist and head and shoulders and then like legs. So I just kind of held on my hand and slowly panned up and down while the thing was going around, and the model came out. Dramatic pause. Looking great. It looks far less diseased this time, it's much cleaner, and the joints and the head facets and everything are much clearer. Both scanners can give you useful dimensions off of this model, that's obvious, but I know which one I think looks better. So on to the next one, a nearly destroyed Porsche 928 toy car. This is not a Hot Wheels car, it is not a Matchbox car, it simply says China on the bottom. Although the model is good enough to tell that it has a transaxle. So kudos to whichever nameless Chinese company designed this thing. I tried a few times on the turntable and the hand scan mode with the ferret. I got a less than ideal scan. Barely the top of this car came out. Now I can tell it's a Porsche 928 just from the roof line and the, this inset rear window thing that showed up, but I'm a nerd. Some other people might be hard pressed to tell it's even a car. Now I'm not knocking the Creality scanner here. This is way beyond what this scanner was designed to do. The ferret can do a full Power Wheels car in fantastic detail, but this Hot Wheels car is way smaller than this thing's supposed to deal with. Now let's try the seal. Well, it can see the whole car at one time, which is nice, so it's a lot easier to scan than the wooden stick guy. I could set on the turntable and get a whole revolution holding the scanner like a, in one position, and then I would lower the scanner and let it do another revolution, because sometimes it, given the angles, there'll be overhangs and other things that the scanner doesn't pick up on. If you hold it at a different position for three rotations, you get a really good scan. They do sell like a turntable and like axis mount thing, that might be able to do that same thing. I don't know, I haven't tried it out, but I got away with it just holding the scanner in my hand while the turntable went around. So that works too. The scan came out great. It definitely looks like a Porsche 928 and you can almost see the detail like on the wheels and that detail is tiny. Okay, now a torture test. I got this little miniature robot guy. This is from One Page Rules. They're a company that make a, like a tabletop war game and all the, all the models are STLs that you can print. And this guy has just got pipes and hoses and hinges and and little extra arms and like this tail thing and that blocks the scanner. So if anything's gonna screw with the scanner, it's gonna be this guy and it's like surface detail. So I'm not even gonna bother showing you the scan that I tried to get with the ferret because it, it couldn't even see it. Nothing at all. Hardly a polygon came out of it. How about the seal? You can clearly recognize this model. You can even see details on his arms and everything. This is, this is, this is crazy. You obviously can't just print this file out and get an exact replica. But for scale and like location of the arms and even even some of the surface detail, like it's it's pretty impressive. It's even got these these tiny little chest arms that I can barely see with my eyes. They show up. I can't believe I can actually track the arms and all and with like all the stuff in the way. Because when you're looking down, this arm thing is blocking everything, and then this tail thing is blocking the other leg. And, and the thing is, I didn't even try to do like four or five and get a better shot. This was one shot, and that's what came out. You can even see the the texture detail on the guy's weapons. It's pretty impressive. I even tried scanning my sign here. I did it before with the, with the Creality Scanner. It picked up a lot of the detail, but the letters were kind of blobby. Now the seal gives me a much sharper line around the letters and everything, and it gets better surface texture. It can't do the whole sign at once. Had to go back and forth a couple of times, but it comes out looking really good. And I think that means this scanner would be really good for tiny parts, to getting like surface detail and dimensions on smaller things. Obviously, that's what it's designed for. None of these scans came out looking like exactly like the real thing, obviously. I think all scan models look a little blobby and bumpy and like rounded corners and things, but that seems to be the nature of 3D scanning, at least these home ones. There may be a way to refine my process or something and get better stuff, but this is just out of the box default settings. And these are not quarter million dollar industrial scanners. They're a few hundred bucks. A 3D modeling whiz would probably be able to make a perfect replica file using any of these scans as a starting point. But that's not me. So, which one is better? Well, what are you making? I make big and small things. So for me, the answer is clearly both. Obviously, if I was scanning like small parts that fit in my hand like this, I would want the seal. You know, you could get better detail, get screw hole locations. If, say you're trying to 3D print something that adapts onto something else, definitely the seal. If I was doing big stuff, like a whole person or a whole car or furniture, I've done furniture, I'd get the Creality Ferret. As a side note, I tried to do a face with the seal it had trouble tracking and getting like the whole thing cleanly and easily. The ferret has no problem with that. 
So I guess I don't have a conclusion. They're both good, but they are not the same. And that's something you have to keep in mind when you're trying to pick a 3D scanner. Figure out what you want to scan, let the size determine which one is for you. Or go with both. If you're crazy like me, get both. I could scan everything now. I bet I could do this whole room. Who wants an STL of the whole garage? It would take up many gigabytes and then everyone would just say, why is your garage so messy? Like, who are you, my conscience? Okay, obviously, links for both of these down below. See you next time. We're gonna melt metal for the next few weeks.